What's going on, guys? Welcome back to this episode of the Road to Redemption podcast. I'm, as always, your host, Cam Williamson. Excited to be back with you, man. Tonight, or today, I should say, <clears throat> we're going to talk about the light that binds. More like the darkness that binds, right? In the last episode, I talked a little bit about kind of my downfalls when I find myself alone. And, you know, I kept trying to find the term headphones off again because I keep hearing myself back I kept looking for the term idle hands of the devil's playground and I just couldn't seem to find it last episode but that's really what I was trying to say and I found it eventually what I want to talk about today is I realized through more reflection that it's how I chose to connect with other human beings right when we talk about early development a lot you hear who you hang around is who you become well You don't really take that to the next level because if it's not just who you hang around, but it's how you find the connections that you make, right? You don't just become best friends with someone day number two. You have to connect with them. You have to hang out with them a little bit. You have to see if you have similar interests, right? And usually what you'll find is in young adolescents, you tend to connect through negative things the things that bother you the rebellious sides of things right now if you have positive influences in your life or you know you have strong um, authority figures in your life who are very monitoring of the situations around you they don't let you really get caught up in stuff like a lot of dark things right I remember when I was a kid we just we entertained ourselves with a lot of darkness um I remember, you know, things were often stressful around us when we were kids. So I think we connected to the darkness of like dark comedies. Um, I wasn't much into like animations and stuff, but my sister liked anime a lot. And I think I grew up with a very dark sense of humor. I woke, um, I grew up watching movies that were older than probably my age group should have been allowed to watch, but we did. And I think because of everything that happened around us mixed with the influences we had, we just grew up a lot faster. So we were okay joking and saying things that a lot of people weren't. And things were desensitized to us. So it was less of a big deal, right? That's when you start experimenting with drugs and drinking and stuff. When you see it a lot on TV, you know, that's why most people have those experiences shielded from them. Because if you don't watch that kind of stuff, if you don't see it and you don't see it glamorized by actors and things. And the other part that I wanted to mention is it's also your personality type, right? Like I've talked plenty of times before, I was always the personality type, more like the Bam Margera and the Jackass crew type where I was always a people pleaser. I wanted to be the person who would at least be entertaining in whatever room I was in because I always felt like I didn't have anything else to offer, right? I wasn't the athlete. I wasn't the smartest kid. I wasn't the greatest musician. You know, I never really found my thing early in life. My thing was always being the funny one or the entertaining one. And when you're real young, that's often by getting in trouble. Um, You have to be big and loud and, you know, outward and cause a big stir to get a big reaction out of people. And, you know, that's not a conducive way to grow up through life, but it is something that I got used to. So even, you know, in the military, I was always the guy that wanted to be the top drinker and all that. Like I wanted to be the most fun because then people want to be around you. But it's not just like because of the holes I had in my life, right? It wasn't like like all of this came from trauma. I grew up with heroes like Jim Carrey and Adam Sandler and Bam Margera and stuff like this who they were constantly the butt of their own jokes. They were constantly uh, making other people laugh at their own expense, at their own shortcomings and their own kind of fuck-ups. So I related to that a lot. You know, I I could I could look at them and go, oh, there's some of me in that. And I just kind of related to it. So I found that 
with the entertainer kind of mindset also often comes the damaged mindset like if you look most comedians are pretty mentally damaged most actors are kind of not all okay upstairs and that comes with you are trying to fill some type of void in that like if, even though you connect with that expression when you look at all the famous robin williams jim carries and stuff and they all suffer from like severe depression and it was from this void that they just couldn't seem to be able to figure out how to fill in their life and even though they all tried substances and getting clean and they all tried every avenue of life um, marriage and everything everybody kind of goes through it different and i think that's in the moment by moment decisions that we make day by day that's kind of what forms our life together you know look at chris farley was one of the funniest comedians out there but he was a complete train wreck to himself you know always abused drugs and food and lord knows what else it was you look and i think and i heard this somewhere as well but when you see people that really suffered a lot and again when i say suffer it doesn't have to mean that in their childhood this grand scheme of events happened that was just so terrible people can suffer because they're unhappy right like things can happen around them that don't have to be catastrophic all the time that can still cause suffering so people's childhoods can be more traumatic than maybe even they realize later in life because you go back and look and you go oh well that wasn't okay and these ways that I were taught early on to deal with things or maybe the way that I wasn't taught I, nobody ever mentioned this to me that I you know that this is a problem and then that's going to cause issues down the line if this kind of behavior continues you know obviously in the basics of life you know we got that don't lie don't steal don't you know stuff like that but in emotional ways of life no and how to deal with people no we never learned stuff like that and that's just because again it, where I grew up in the world like Midwest United States it wasn't really something that people talked about you, you you know especially in the 90s you didn't talk about anxiety you didn't talk about depression depression was for crazy people back in the 90s you know and that's why you know I started the shatter it movement and everything because it's something that needs to be talked about it's not about putting blame on your parents and it's not about being a victim to the upbringing that you had not saying that you don't have every right to because you probably do but you just have to realize that it's not doing anything for you now and you can only really find that when you look deep inside yourself and you're willing to look at the painful sides of you what causes you pain, right? And you can't just look at it as, well, it causes me pain because I've always dealt with this feeling. A feeling like anxiety and depression, right? Now, depression is a clinical thing. So is anxiety. It can be, but we'll talk more about depression, right? When, when you start getting the physical symptoms of like depression where the fatigue just doesn't make any sense and your thoughts are completely out of whack with how you would usually think and feel about yourself and your life and things like that you have to be able to like i said a couple episodes ago you have to be able to know okay this is not normal I'm not just in a normal rut of life. I'm not just kind of normally down on myself because I'm not where I want to be. You in, you have to be able, and it's what I said for years, is I just want to be able to have that buffer space. That's what I call it, my buffer space and decision making where like unmedicated, that buffer space is non-existent. I go from whatever happens around me to instant reaction right and that's because of the anxiety and the ptsd now those all come from actions throughout my life and the way that i've voluntarily and involuntarily chosen to respond to them my brain and my nervous system have now wired themselves to where even when the smallest thing happens we react that way it's just how the human body works 
So unmedicated, I have no ability to be able to even think in that space of, oh, I'm in uh, an uncomfortable situation. I'm already reacting, right? Medicated, I'm able to look at a situation and go, okay, this is what it is. Possibly it is annoying or it is frustrating or it is even an inconvenience. But does it warrant a huge explosion? No, that would be absolutely silly. And then you're able to make that decision, right? It doesn't mean that it fixes all your problems, right? You're still going to have days that are bad and you're still going to struggle with things that you struggled with before you were medicated. But it does give you, in a lot of instances, that buffer space to be able to to begin to do the work of self-exploration, right? I have always talked since the beginning of this show about how important self-assessment is. One thing I myself um, was incorrect on all these years when I was saying that I didn't believe in meds, I don't believe meds work, I think they're bad, they cause all these problems. Here's the problem. There comes a point when medical intervention can help and is helpful, right? That doesn't mean that it's the end all be all to everything. That's the same thing I said about cannabis when I was talking about that. I didn't say that was the end all be all to everything either because I believe that it works for some and it doesn't work for others. I think in your life, you have to look only, at, and here's, I know it sounds super cliche, but Nobody went through every second of every day of your life with you. You are the only one who did that. So you are the only one who is wired the way you are. You've had every conversation that makes you up, right? You've, you've lived through every timeline event in your life. Your mother, your father, your siblings, they have not been through every single situation with you. So they cannot understand everything about you. Even the closest people to you, no matter how much you tell them, they can't understand because they weren't there. They didn't feel it the same. They didn't react the same way. Three people can be in a car and be in a car accident, and they will have three different responses. And after that event, it will affect them three different ways. We have to open the box of communication, the Pandora's box, I guess we'll call it, and be willing to just, like I said, take the blame away. It's not about saying, well, my parents, my grandparents, whoever did this or my siblings did this. It's more about going, look, this is the way I was raised to believe. And just like with political things, just like with moral standings or whatever, things you see online... You have to choose moment by moment, like, how do I feel about that? What can I do about that now? How can I change that? Does that need to be changed? That's a big question most people aren't even willing to ask. Does my circle need changing? That was the thing for a long time that I wasn't willing to do. Because I was the entertainer and because I was the damaged one that came from a, you know, rough upbringing, everyone knew kind of around me that, my my situation was less than ideal. Um, I was often the sad eyes of the room when I would, you know, people would talk about my situation. I would always see people kind of go, mm, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. But um, because of that, I think people always felt the need to, like, protect me or they thought that I needed to be coddled or I needed to be... I don't know. I need that that I was um sensitive, so I think I grew up sensitive by nature but just by being treated that way. Right? I think uh, and not to mention that was used against me a lot. I I've always been a person through my entire life that I feel and I always feel very deeply. That's never changed from as early as I can remember. When someone says something to me, I take it in and I really feel it and I try to process it for what it is unless I'm you know being a lesser version of myself and really distracted I try not to do things 
half ass or and I try not to half ass conversations because I want to be present in the moment with the people and things that I'm doing. And with that comes a lot of feeling. I mean, you're going to connect and you're going to be passionate about the things that you talk about and the things that you do. Um, but you have to realize that in life, things are fleeting, right? If you get connected to every single person or thing that you try or try a conversation or a relationship with, life is just going to be damn near impossible because the amount of heartbreak that we feel as human beings throughout a lifetime is probably enough that it should kill most creatures. But for whatever reason, we're able to endure it. That, I mean, that feeling when, I mean, I've, I remember sitting in my apartment when I was 18 years old, coming off of a multiple day drug and drinking bender. I remember feeling terrible physically. And I remember just sitting there going like, is this, is this all life really has to offer? Is this the best it's going to get for me? Because at this current state, I've done everything that a person shouldn't do. Like I dropped out of high school. I, I kind of had distanced myself from my family. I was drinking. I was doing drugs. I was doing everything. And I was like, at the current route that my life is going, and I had no real plan, where is this heading? Because I thought that I was leaving a bad situation. But I've left a bad situation only to create a worse one. And now my bad situation is not looking so bad. Which makes me feel even worse because that shows me that I'm not capable of handling this thing that's called life on my own. And that humbled me. That gave me the ability to be more empathetic and sympathetic to my parents and the people that raised me because I saw how difficult life was from an early age um, when you make decisions that affect your life long term. And I had to deal with a lot of that kind of shit, you know, having kids and losing kids and stuff like that. I mean, it's tough. I, I you know, I... I tried to live life quicker than I was ready to live it. And I think a lot of us are guilty of that, but I was given more freedoms to be able to, you know, explore more and get myself into more trouble. And with that, you just don't really realize the long-term effects that that can have sometimes. I guess is what I'm really trying to get to. Um, if you're young, you know, and you listen to this, there's nothing cool about damaging yourself, right? It's something that I think a lot of, it's a role that a lot of people try to fill. If you look in high schools and colleges and you look even at office places, there's, there's always these characters who are self-depreciating and uh, they always have to kind of be doing something that's a little too much. And if it's not too much, they always just, they're kind of always the vibe of the room is these people. And it, it's usually at their own detriment. Like it comes at the detriment of their work or whatever, whatever. I know people that are good people at home and they're terrible people when they leave the house because they just feel like they need to be this new character, this new facade. And, um, I just want to encourage you to try to find the parts of yourself where you feel like maybe you're trying to do that. Um, I still find myself every day slipping into these little characteristic holes where I'm like, wow, I haven't done that since I was a kid. Like, uh, you know, I, I see in the moment where that natural reaction came from because I remember that time in my life where I thought that joke was funny and I would say it. Um, and I do. I find a lot of the times that my my pain, I guess, lies in the humor that I use and in the way that I speak and the sarcastic tones that I do kind of uh, subconsciously use sometimes. And that affects, you know, how I interact with people. So again, it's all in self-analysis. It's all in the desire to be better. It's all in being willing to ask for help and being willing to take that help when you do ask for it and not just 
uh, ask for help to gain attention on a subject and then just piss off with the help that people do offer because there's nothing more disrespectful than when you ask people for help, they give you the help, and then you just fuck off with their time and don't take the advice that they offer you. Now, I'm not saying you have to take every single piece of advice that's given to you, but if you go searching for help and people give it, you should, especially if you're in a bad place in life, you should be smart enough to uh, adhere to the advice you asked for. Okay, guys, we're going to take off for this week. I appreciate you so much. As you can see, we got the new gear in. My Gangster Love gear comes in today. I got the joggers on right now, but you can't see them. Head on over. Road, the number two, redemptionpodcast.com. Grab some merch. Check out some old episodes. Let us know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It helps us more than you guys know. Subscribe for more videos, and we'll see you later on this week. Love you guys.